Oh my God, guys, this is incredible. I just spent $12,000 on stocks and I could literally die happy tomorrow with where my current portfolio sits. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the weirdest statement I have ever made, but I'm talking about 12 stocks currently worth $130,351, dripping me $450 a month, almost completely tax-free. I'm gonna break all of this down for you guys and show you how I'm managing to do this as we just purchased five stocks and we finalized all of these so I don't ever have to buy any more of them. And I'm gonna explain what I mean by that. But let's head on over to the portfolio. Ladies and gentlemen, let's just jump ready. Welcome back to my passive income investors. I like to another super exciting breakdown because I did some crazy purchases, spent about 10,000 US from positions that I sold, transferred to tax advantaged accounts. We're gonna go over all of that in this video, but what I'm not gonna do is show you the individual purchases. If you guys wanna check out me buying those stocks in real time, head on over to Passive Income for Dummies. Consider subscribing, it is my new second channel and I would appreciate you over there. But let's get right into this, taking a look at the overview, guys. We're making $450 monthly, you know, give or take a dollar here or there. There's a few discrepancies, but I finally got my portfolio to exactly where I want it. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at the portfolio itself within my iCloud numbers. If we scroll down, the entire portfolio now has been nicely diversified between my four accounts all coming together in this wonderful chart right here. So before we get back into the overview, we're gonna take a look at the entire accounts themselves, starting with the tax-free savings account, which is where I purchased some more shares and BTI finalizing the position, some GEO group finalizing the position and Rio Can, which is almost finalized, I might add some dividends here just to get it up in comparison to my other Canadian stocks. Now, in my other accounts, what's happened is I transferred money over to my TFSA from my managed account, which is where I sold off some MO. The reason I did this is because once a year, you get a $6,000 contribution limit to your tax-free savings account. Once that money is in here, all the money I make now is completely tax-free, making this TFSA worth 103 K, something absolutely impressive. Moving into that RRSP account that has been just destructing lately, up 27% in just a couple months, guys. Not only including the money, it's saving me deferring my current taxes because that's what a registered retirement saving plan does. I was selling off some VFE today, which is the Vanguard S&P 500 index. I sold that because I think I'm young enough I can take on a little more risk and I, I liked having it in my portfolio to compare it, but I always outperform it. So why not just leverage into the companies I know and love? So what I want to and did is I bought some more Johnson and Johnson, ladies and gentlemen. And yes, that's right. I purchased some more Tesla shares, as you can see here, bringing these total positions to the scale where I want them, making my total position in Johnson and Johnson 8K and my Tesla common shares 6,700 bucks, ladies and gentlemen. So it's going to be neat to track this over time. So also consider subscribing to this channel because this is where you're going to get the full updates. Uh, every Monday and Friday, I will be doing portfolio updates, but we're not done, ladies and gentlemen. We got one more account and then we're going to head on into the dividends themselves to see what it's changed there. Finally, uh, we're looking at my Royal Bank account, which is doing quite healthy. This is the account I will be focusing on going into this year. I'm going to try and contribute somewhere between three to 500 a month to this account because I can no longer really take advantage of my other accounts as they are maxed out. So moving into my dividends, looking at the tax-free savings account, as I mentioned, we're talking a hundred percent tax-free, 100%. So that's what's so great about this is I'm making $2,128 in USDs and another $2,009 in CAD. Now, obviously, this is going to fluctuate day-to-day -day based on the Canadian dollar uh, because Canadian dollar really changes the overall value of my dividend income considering I'm mostly collecting USDs here. So when this comes in, obviously, it'll fluctuate a bit. But the beauty of this, guys, is if I decide to use it with CAD, I can convert it whenever I think is necessary. And that CAD amount is about 2800 bucks. So if you add up the 2800 plus the 2k I'm making in actual CAD dollars, we're looking at about $4800 of tax-free income every year or roughly 100 bucks a week or $400 a month just off this one account. This is life-changing to a 27-year-old like myself. So I'm not going to complain. Uh, obviously my dividends have cut back in my managed account because I moved the funds over. And trust me, I'd much rather collect the dividends in that account than this account. This account not only am I collecting USDs, but now I'm paying like all kinds of fees on them and it goes toward my regular income tax. It's, it's really dumb. And so moving into the final account where I saved a lot of money, 
is my RSP. My RSP probably saved me just with what I put in here and my write-offs this year, somewhere between eight and 10,000 bucks. So you gotta consider that my Tesla shares are almost pretty much free because the government was just gonna take it anyways. So hate on me for my Tesla stock as much as you'd like, but remember, it's as if I wasn't gonna own it anyway. So it's kind of like a little cherry on top of the portfolio cake. Taking a look at Johnson & Johnson in here though, we're gonna be collecting $231 completely tax-free this year uh, until I decide to utilize it in this account. So I mean, two best tax advantage accounts. Gotta love Canada, man. Gotta love it, gotta love it. So let's go over the overview and see the full uh, perspective of how I have my current diversification. If we scroll over these little pie charts, you can see right here, guys, we can take a look and it's really easy to tell that uh, my biggest spread of everything is consumer staples. Consumer staples alone, let me scroll back up here. Oh, we're losing stuff. We're losing stuff. Scroll back up. We're going to go over because I want to show you the exact dividend income uh, off consumer staples. These are my sin stocks. This is my BTI and my MO, which if you can't tell, I own a lot of it. So we're making 1603 Canadian dollars, uh, which makes up 30% of my overall income just off those two companies. But I'm, I'm fairly well happy considering the dividends that come into my TFSA that I'm going to be buying new positions with. That'll start averaging uh, my current portfolio weighting out because uh, I do think consumer staples are a little bit overweighted between those two stocks but i mean not to the point where i'm uneasy whatsoever with it and then on top of that guys if we take a look at the pie here we got financials making up a huge sector that'd be like my canadian banks and we got another 17 being made up by real estate which i thought would come in a little heavier but uh, i should try and scale that which is why i was saying i should probably purchase a little bit more rio can and then we got 18 percent coming from or did, did i mess that up no real estate is that and then utilities here should be about 18 percent uh, 18%, which is fairly healthy. It'd be nice to get this up to about 20% as well, but I'm not buying any more utilities, guys. Looking at the portfolio value, because this is just the dividend income pie, looking at the portfolio pie itself, based off those few sectors, because I only own these six sectors, ladies and gentlemen, I got to maybe start adding into some other sectors, maybe like uh, materials or industrials, but I'm pretty happy with the companies I own within the sectors because no one sector makes up more than 30% of my portfolio. And if you want to see something really fascinating, guys see this 29 percent here that is made up by information and technology but if you look at the dividend income information and technology only makes up six percent of my total income these stocks are three companies which are apple microsoft and i also threw tesla in here because i totally think tesla is more of a technology and information company as its future value highly relies on its data so i'm gonna kind of focus play you get a lot of other sectors in there too don't get me wrong but i also think that ai and self-driving is going to be a major factor to their overall income in the future. So taking a look, guys, it's kind of interesting to see how that's the fattest percentage. But you have to remember, those stocks have moved the portfolio the most in 2019. So even though it makes up 29% of the portfolio, I'm much happier that way because those are growth stocks. And then the rest of these will be our dividend stocks, as we can see here, dividing up the rest of the pie, making up, you know, that other 66% or so, which is super awesome. Everything's fairly equally uh, weighted out other than healthcare, obviously, because Johnson & Johnson is my only healthcare stock. But I kind of put Johnson & Johnson within my consumer staples because I kind of consider it a sin stock similar to my BTI and my MO, just because they mainly peddle opioids and all these drugs. And I mean, you guys know what Johnson & Johnson does. I don't got to break that down right now for you. Um, but I would love to know what you guys think about this is I am so unbelievably happy today with how this has finally been done. I can walk away tomorrow, never touch this portfolio again, and actually be pretty bloody happy happy with it considering anything from here is just going to be super great so we're going to be taking these dividends we're going to be reinvesting them so stick around guys because i'm going to show you everything we're going to be buying as this year of 2020 hopefully bring some amazing uh growth to the portfolio and i wish the same on you again if you want to see these trades as they happen live head on over to passive income for dummies youtube channel where i'm actually going to be posting a ton of extra content and i really appreciate your support if you guys enjoyed this channel and also if you want to purchase the chart so you guys can follow along and track your portfolio the way I do, head on over to PassiveIncomeForDummies.com. But stay cool, stay awesome, guys. I look forward to chatting to you real soon.